Hulu? Nah. Netflix? See ya. Right stuff? Yes. Now that's the stuff. And we're not talking about Hostess. What's up, guys? This is Venge here bringing you guys another Right Stuff anime unboxing review. But before we begin, I gotta give a huge shout out to Right Stuff Anime for bringing this goodness over my way. And today we're gonna be reviewing Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Bandit Flower. <gasps> Such a long title, but you know what? That just makes it that much more interesting. So why don't we go ahead and get into the presentation? So the front cover is quite unique and mysterious, and when I first laid eyes on this, I was wondering who the character is in the background. And then on top of that, why are there flowers surrounding this guy? I mean, it is hit hit bandit flower. Why are they calling this bandit flower, thunderbolt bandit flower? It just raised a lot of questions and it piqued my curiosity. And then on top of that, the design of the Gundam known as Atlas Gundam looks absolutely incredible. I mean, the Gundam on the front cover definitely sets itself apart from many of the other main protagonist Gundams that I have seen, because all of the other previous models always had some kind of similarity amongst each other uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, Gundams from other series. Either it was the color or the design of the head, but when I look at Atlas Gundam, there's a huge difference here. The use of color of this particular box set is quite unique and interesting. The dark hue surrounds the Gundam as if there's some kind of mysterious sinister presence, as if the character on the cover could be the big bad guy here. And the fact that the face of this guy isn't visible definitely helped me assume that he isn't the main protagonist, that there's something more to that, you know, this individual that's on the cover. And so as you move on to the spinal portion of the disc here, you know, the disc case, the title just pops. And one of the biggest reasons why this title pops is because of the fact that it's surrounded by a relatively dark background. So it's definitely going to be easy on eyes, easy to read, super clean print. And then on top of that, if you look here, I had to back up a little bit because it's kind of hard to see the Atlas Gundam here because of the fact that it seems as though the Atlas Gundam is uniquely made in a way that it blends in, blends in with the background because of all of the dark hues. Not sure if that was done intentionally or not, but it definitely looks better when you actually get your hands on the case. So why don't we go ahead and look at the back here. Now the back continues with dark colors along with thumbnails near the edges of the case. Nothing extremely over the top, you know. However, sometimes simple designs just works. I mean, the front cover is my favorite part of this case due to the unique difference in style. Usually you would see either multiple characters um, on the front cover or the face of the main protagonist, but this time that did not happen. There were neither, and so it really stood out to me. Now I'm going to read what we have on the back. The war is not over yet. Earth, eight months after the end of the One Year War, Captain Monica launches a secret mission Operation Thunderbolt and selects Eo to pilot the Atlas Gundam. She leads the assault landing ship Spartan into a part of the ocean effectively controlled by the South Seas Alliance. Their objective is to secure or destroy the data of the Psycho Zaku, which the Alliance now possesses. Daryl, who took the upper hand in his battle with Eo, has descended to Earth as part of the remnant forces of the Principality of Zeon. He has also been given the mission of obtaining information on the Psycho Zaku. Fighting alongside his canoe comrades, Eo encounters Commander Pier, 
the South Sea Alliance's border garrison commander. In the sea, on the ice field, and among the thick jungle, the mobile suits of Xeon, the Federation, and the South Seas Alliance battle each other. The war is not over yet. So pretty much it also contains special features such as promos, TV commercial, and trailers. And then the video is in 1080p high definition with aspect ratio of 16 to 9. Yeah, that's what it says. Subtitles. There's English subtitles. This video will last a total of 80 minutes, one disc. Very solid stuff. So the awesome thing about this series is not going to be something that will take forever to watch. You can enjoy this in one foul swoop. One thing that I love about Right Stuff Anime is the art that you find <laughs> inside the case. It's always super clean. And so once again, here we go. Super clean art of EO, which is the name of the main protagonist here. This guy here, he is the main protagonist. He is a member of the Federation versus Daryl, this guy here which is the hero of Xeon. Super crispy art right here. The right stuff. Now, why don't we look at the disc here? Not much to say here, but pretty much it just gives you a nice closer look of the Atlas Gundam. And I must just say more clean, crispy, beautiful color. I, I just love the use of color when it comes to this box art. So why don't we go ahead and talk about the dope movie itself. The fact that you are still watching this video gives me the impression you are still interested in checking out Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Banded Flower. Therefore, whenever you become interested, please check out the link in the description section below to get the right stuff for the right price. To pick up this excellent movie. So let's begin by talking about the story. Now the story takes place eight months after the one year war, which I previously mentioned. Captain Monica selects EO, the pilot, the Atlas Gundam, for a special reason that I would not spoil. The mission is to obtain or destroy data from a powerful Xeon mobile suit known as the Psycho Saku which is in the hands of traitors that once fought alongside the Federation. And those traitors is known as the South Seas Alliance. And so you have Daryl, a hero of Zeon who sacrificed a lot for the sake of Zeon. He actually has the same mission as EO. However, he is to recover the data rather than destroy it. And so Daryl and EO are both survivors of the One Year War. Now, the characters that stood out to me the most was Daryl and Bianca. I mean, Daryl's side of the story is quite interesting because despite him being part of the antagonist group, the Xeon, he is a very likable character. Daryl is humble, loves the beauty of Earth, and is a strong leader despite his delicate demeanor. Plus, the struggles he had to endure showcased the kind of suffering that the Federation doesn't seem to encounter, which makes you wonder if the Federation is actually as innocent as they portray themselves to be. Now, Bianca of the Federation is far more interesting than EO. I'm sorry, EO, but you take the hell. I mean, EO is cool, but Bianca just has so much more to offer personality wise due to her immense amount of spunk boy does she have a lot of that now eo just reminds me of your typical cookie cutter anime hero bianca's skills in battle is amazing and i got pretty hyped when she expressed how she didn't care about piloting a gundam as powerful as atlas which really proved that she had a lot of confidence in her abilities. Now the crazy thing is 
Her personality makes watching battles pure hype. Now, despite EO being somewhat generic EO style of close range combat, and his taste of music is quite unique. EO's style of music, jazz, one of the reasons why I'm wearing this hat right now, was an unexpected part of the soundtrack. You like jazz? Popped into my head instantly that phrase that you just heard. May I repeat that phrase again? Cue it, my boy. You like jazz? The music selection seems strange, but the moments the music played, for whatever reason, it actually fits. It was actually quite cool. You can finish Thunderbolt Bandit Flower in one day since it's just a movie. And the nice thing about this one is it's full of action. You don't have to worry about drawn out political discussions. The English dub is quite good and the animation is top notch and the visuals are just clean, colorful, and even has a hint of CG. It looked really clean and crisp. Now I was a bit surprised at the gore and the surprising deaths due to how shockingly brutal the scenes looked. Boy oh boy, I literally had to rewind a little bit to see the carnage because it was pretty insane. And for those of you dudes and dudettes who love a little fan service, well, Bianca the crew got you covered. Nothing insane, but worth mentioning due to how funny the scene between Bianca and the other soldiers turned out. And let's just say that Atlas Gundam has a few epic tricks to show off in this movie as well. The battles were very entertaining since every single mobile suit actually packed a punch. The Gundam to be more exact, the Atlas Gundam did not bulldoze, I repeat, did not bulldoze through everything like in many of the series that I reviewed before this one. I mean, the fact that the other mobile suits had the power to break down the Atlas Gundam was quite refreshing. It really was. and. It can get a little dull watching a single Gundam just ripping through hundreds of mobile suits in a few strikes. So I really did appreciate that about the action in this movie. I had a lot of fun watching this movie, which encouraged me to give Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Bandit Flower a 10 Biancas out of 10. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you want the right stuff, then go to rightstuffanime.com. Thanks for watching, and be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you in the next review. Peace!